Oh, right, right, right. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Florencio Files, where we watch a man basically recreate what it is to play StarCraft. A man with the mechanics of a drunk Lima, somehow who plays at a master's level and is just an absolute monster. Of course, it's the Sewer Mermaid. He's on a new map pool. He's got new patch, new balance changes, new units. And this is always just excellent, I feel, for Florencio, as he puts in a, uh, a very weird pylon down here. Because the world's his oyster. You've just messed things up. People are trying new builds. The balance is different. And Create up here in the top right side of the map is going to have his work cut out for him. I've already had a few people who've been watching Florencio's stream message me and they're like, Pig, dude, you got to go. you got to cast some of these flow games. Like, they're like, dude, it is the weirdest stuff you've ever seen. And I've heard this from some masters and GM players that have been hanging out in his chat. Uh, obviously, not necessarily saying it's 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 going to change the pro meta or anything like that, but they're just like, dude, Flo's been pulling out some bangers. So... I have basically just been getting all of his replays. Uh, I've been like, hey, what you got? He's been sending me ones. He even sent me a weird video as well. He said I'd understand it later on, so I don't know what the hell. Either way, it's going to be a forge which is hidden on the low ground. I don't think Create saw this. Okay, forge has not been spotted, so it's a sneaky cannon rush. Two-gate Cybercore coming up. By the way, they did fill in the gaps on this bridge, by the way, for anyone who's familiar with this map. He's pulled off gas, so he fake mined gas into a cannon rush. He's now going to wall off the ramp. Second pylon, Florencio. <laughs> he needs to wall this off, doesn't he? Florencio, what are you doing, mate? Okay, he's got 500 minerals in the bank. This may be the worst Florencio cannon rush I've ever seen. I, I don't understand what he's going for. He's just going to go straight for mass cannon by the looks of it. It's a probe versus probe battle. Ooh, okay, fancy probe micro for float. Oh, he's actually doing a really nice run around in the circle. He's winning the, the probe fight, but he's not doing anything with his money. Wait, what the, what the hell is going how the hell did he get over there? He just walled off with five pylons on the right side of the map. I did not I did not see that probe get inside this base. Am I blind? What in the hell just happened? Apparently, the Protoss player, Create, who was chronoing a zealot and pulling probes to the left, also didn't see it until now and is absolutely dumbstruck. They're trying to build a depths right now. They're going to need stalkers to shoot across that. I don't understand where this third probe came from. I was so busy getting excited over Florence on a new map pool that I clearly... I must have just stacked the probes, but I didn't see them... I, I, th I don't know what the hell is going on here, but he somehow got these three cannons up. That might just be GG right there. Florencio, you absolute dark wizard. What the hell have you pulled off here? One pylon goes down, the cannon taking damage. That probe falls as well, but cannons beat the crap out of Adepts. The Adepts could attack this building cannon in the bottom. He's got stalkers on the way now, does create, but create is outnumbered by the cannons. The cannons have got too much firepower. They're in range of the minerals. Behind this, Florencio is building probes. He's mining gas, and he's starting his first gateway at three minutes into the game. Oh, what foul savagery is this? What dark arts have you summoned? <laughs> he must have stacked the probes. I guess that's what the early gas was for, was to stack the probes? I still don't understand where the probe was, because I didn't see the probe at all. What the hell? <laughs> okay, wait, wait, I, I, I mentioned the video. Before we look at the replay, I need to show you guys this video that Florencio linked me to give some context. Because I was purposefully actually kind of paying attention. I didn't realize this game was so short. Okay, so Florencio actually linked me this video. And I watched this like a week or two ago. I think it was about a week ago when he sent me this replay. And basically, it's this weird little illusion where it's count how many times the player's wearing white past the ball. And it's got a bunch of girls and black and white shirts passing the ball around. And you're staring at it and you're staring at it. And then as time goes on, a goddamn monkey walks in and you're so focused on counting the ball, you can still count it and you can still get it correct, right? Which is, is I think I got this right when I actually tested it, which was really cool, right? The correct answer is 16 passes. Now I got that right. However, did you spot the gorilla? It's like, did you spot the gorilla? Of course we spotted the gorilla. Everyone spotted the gorilla. You haven't seen or heard about it. Apparently about half missed the gorilla because they're so focused on counting the ball. We saw it, but did you notice the curtain changing color or the player on the black team leaving the game? And I did not learn to notice either of those. So apparently the curtain changed color. And when the monkey comes on, this girl just leaves shot and you don't even notice it. And Florencio was like, hey, this video is for the this game that I've just looked at. <laughs> And I, I thought, I, I should have been paying more attention because this is actually really obvious in hindsight, I'm sure. I'm sure this is not that secretive. We've got to take a look. Okay, so let's go back to the start and let's see if we can spot it now that we understand what the hell is going on. 
This is so ridiculous. Okay, so he did, he, okay, so, because I was, I was like, what is this pylon down here? Okay, so basically, there's already step one to the illusion, which is, where's my pylon? It's in a weird spot. Where are your buildings? So then he builds the gas. He does his classic probe stack here. He gets the probes on top of each other. Okay, so he slides the two probes inside. I still don't understand where he hid the probe, though. Because when he gets it, he didn't have any space to hide. It's not like, did he split it and curve down the bottom and hide down here? Even that, I feel I would have noticed on the minimap. So this is, this is what's bizarre. He goes for the forge. The opponent's like, wait, there's a pylon, but where's the building? Wait, there's a gas. Where's the building? And then Florencio goes across the map. All right. Let's look at Florencio's camera. Let's watch an actual Florencio time as he comes in here. So he comes in. No way! He hides the probe right there! And if you don't curve your camera, it's hidden behind the minerals. Yes, it's a different color. But it's especially depending on the player colors they're using, that's actually... <laughs> it's easier for us to see when he has it selected because it gets the red circle around it from an observer's point of view. But when he doesn't have it selected, it's almost impossible to see. And he, he, this is the monkey over here is these two probes and this pylon. And he, he just walks in. I cannot, I cannot believe this. Look at how well he hides that probe. So what he does is he clicks them on the minerals and then he just presses like hold position or something. And then he pulls back one of the probes. And I think he has, yeah. And it just sits there and it's so hard to see it because you've always got other probes on top of it of your own. The minerals are there. And more importantly, this probe immediately draws your attention. You're already distracted with this probe getting attacked by that probe now there's a pylon here this may be the dirtiest trick and it's such a simple illusion but just using this particular mineral that's sticking out the top to hide that probe this only works if you've got this certain mineral formation and then the probe just looks like oh you're distracted aren't you and just when creates vision is over there he just comes out and walls himself in oh my god this is so dirty that's that pylon absolutely sucks by the way that does not wall him off at all but creates cameras over to the left. Let's check where creates cameras. This is so funny. So yeah, creates cameras over to the left. And you're going to see that probe on the far right of our screen just exited. Exactly like the goddamn... Man, he orchestrated this perfectly. He must have tried this so many times to get this just right. And then you're going to see create realize at some point there's pylons on the far right of their screen. I don't think they've realized just yet. And they should have pulled probes to attack. And now they realize. And they're like, when did that happen? This is the dirtiest trick ever. Well played, Flo. Well played. Well played, mate. All right. Well, we can't just leave you with that. At the top left side, we've got another game here. My Mind's Eye, Florencio. And apparently he's been bringing out bangers like that left, right, and center. So I'm hoping to see some innovation across the board. He's going to be playing a TVP in this game on Gressman. Now, this one is on the balance test uh, PTR, I believe because it is the old map pool, but it is with the new balance, uh, I've been told. So we'll check as it goes on. The opponent, Marcus, seems to be a bit of a Florencio themselves. They didn't build probes at the start of the game. They've now started building probes while sending one probe to his base, one probe to proxy. This is a very special tactic right here. When I say special, I mean Florencio style special. This does not seem very optimal whatsoever. Now, Florencio himself is going gas first into a barracks. Actually, decently timed barracks and gas, to be fair. This is one of the tighter openings I've seen from Florencio in a while. He's going to trap that probe here, I think. Oh, no, he's sending an SCV out across the map. So he's going to go scout himself. That probe is up here like a minute earlier than it needs to be to proxy anything. Marcus with a very, very silly build order for Florencio. He's the king of silly builds. So we're going to get to see silliness versus silliness. And uh, as always, I like to see in StarCraft two types of games. Elite best players in the world fighting at the highest level of StarCraft attainable from a, a human, like ever. And the other version I like to see is two toddlers with monster trucks who's going and just kind of smashing their, their cars together. And then one of them starts crying because their car got smashed more than their other toddler's car did. And Florencio is kind of an expert at making that stuff happen. Now he's going barracks plus proxy barracks. This, this probe's actually microing really well, which is incredible because Marcus's macro sucks. They are down three probes from where they should be at a minute 45. But they're on gas. They got a cyber core at a decent timing. They're clearly ready to proxy in this top side. I'm imagining it's going to be a Stargate proxy, maybe some early Oracles. Tempests have been very popular on the new patch because they're much faster with their acceleration. They're much more microable. But I love the way Marcus is keeping this probe alive while clearly doesn't know how to use shift click. 
Because any high level player would just shift click this around to queue up big circular orders around the base. Whereas Marcus is spending an insane amount of APM to micro this probe actively. It's it's insane to me. This is this is like Florencio levels of unnecessary manual control when you could just queue it up to do it, or even put a you could put a four waypointed patrol path and it could have survived this whole time. <laughs> the Reaper's just chilling there. Flo did not rally across the map. He's building a factory and a reactor on the other side. Okay, we're gonna see a cyclone proxy, which could be super, 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 super deadly. But there's a proxy stargate. So proxy stargate versus proxy uh, cyclone. As I said, monster trucks smashing into each other. My favorite. Is it my favorite? Depending. I, I I do prefer it, I would say. There's the rare, rare time when you see like top level StarCraft players and they decide to also smash their monster trucks into each other. Dark and Hero, I'm talking about you guys. People whose build orders are uh, definitely Florencio inspired, but their micro and macro is good enough to make it into a top tier game despite that. Stalker comes in, or Reaper, sorry, comes in. Stalker gets bounced. Flo doesn't see anything in there, and he might be thinking, hey, this is a little bit suspicious right now. What the hell's going on? He's got a bunker on the high ground. Does he go for the backup bunker behind the minerals? We know he loves that against Zerg. Not so sure if he uses it versus Protoss. He's actually going to go react at Widow Mines. What in the bloody heck? Okay, guys. All right, we've got we've got Proxy Chadre. Marcus is going to give Florencio a taste of his own medicine. If you recognize that Dankcraft logo, names like My Mind's Eye, Shredder, Florencio uh dexter a few of his account names you very well may be realize this is florencio if you've watched the show and damn marcus may may know about it and he may be like hey i'm gonna give him a taste of his own medicine get some chad rays in there and take a piss on him the reaper is actually gonna take away so much mighty time where is the stalker oh my god the stalker what the hell is the stalker doing he's letting this reaper do so much lost mining time damage as well as two probes the stalker finally is gonna kill no what is this stalker micro? What is this stalker micro? Marcus doesn't realize the Reaper went in the other direction. Has Marcus got like a field of vision that sees one quarter of the screen? That was some of the funniest control I've ever seen. This Protoss player is an absolute nincompoop. Oh my god, this is hilarious. <laughs> oh my god. This is a match made in heaven. Okay, there's an engineering bay here, which he's going to need. He's going to build a turret, but man, Void Rays can kill turrets pretty quickly. But if he mass repairs, he'll be okay. More Widow Mines are building right now, but Florencio is supply blocked. <laughs> this game is a disaster. I love it. The Protoss has already lost four probes. They're trying to expand now. They're on 20 workers. Five minutes into the game, only 20 workers, and they're building a forge to make cannons. Uh, meanwhile, the third Chandray trying to build up this is incredible. This is incredible to me. Just remember out there, this is Diamond. I'm pretty sure this is like Diamond 2 or Diamond 3 uh, ladder, which is insane when you think about it. But um, I think it's even more crippling because every time we cast a flow files with a game like this, where the players like are just kind of doing their demented proxies, there's always so many comments and they're like, oh my God, what is this? Gold 3 play, silver. There's no way this is better than bronze. And I'm like, oh... It's funny because I know just like statistically some of the commenters will have actually lost to either of these players, right? That's just how it goes. But there's the big thing in StarCraft. There is a rule. And I think Florencio has this one enshrined, which is if you fuck up the game enough, you basically minus 500 MMR from your opponent. It just, it happens. If you just make the game weird, people's brains break. When people, people rely more on pattern recognition in games like StarCraft than they themselves even realize. And all you need to do is, uh, is, is put them in unfamiliar territory and you start to see people just panic and freak out. Lorenzo, though, he never freaks out and that is his psychological advantage. He's going to try and take this base. He's got two tanks and a bunch of Widow Mines. He sees only a sentry and a stalker. He can float the barracks to hide the Widow Mines, which is, I think, what he's doing right now. He's going to try and move his Widow Mines forward a little bit because, yeah, you can't really see the Widow Mine mark if you float the barracks over it. Or he's going to move the barracks forward as a spotter. That's four Chad Rays. That is a double alpha of Chad Rays, plus one ship weapons and a robo on the way in the back here for Marcus. Marcus actually has a pretty good setup to beat this if they can just get some immortals out to deal with the siege tanks and whatnot. Hallucination's going to go across the map. I'm surprised Marcus hasn't gone in yet. They take a tank shot. That's going to trigger them for sure. Okay, double Void Ray's going to go in. There's two turrets in a bunker. Four Void Rays can take that out very quickly. A siege tank marches forward. It's going to be an accident, surely. I think Florencio is just trying to bait him into the Widow Mines. But rather than taking the bait, Marcus pulls away. And oh no, Florencio a little bit slow to repair. Oh no! His command center is getting blasted down by the prismatic alignment. He could try to repair it, but he's not going to. It's going to go down. Command center goes down. Florencio has a new one on the other side of the map. He does keep his SCVs alive for now. The turret's going to get mass repaired this time. Ooh, okay. 
Nice mass repair. Very nice mass repair there. That looks fantastic. That looks really, really good. That does. The engineering bay is going to take some damage as well. Tank is starting a shell on this natural. What's he got up here? Uh, immortals are building. Like I said, Immortals could do it, but I think Disruptors will actually be key because Disruptors wreck Widow Mines as well. Turret's starting to build on the front, or he tried to, but it looks like it got blocked there. A recall's going to come in. Uh-oh, those tanks are a little exposed. Widow Mines do pretty good versus Void Rays, though. Cyclone's going to try and bait them in. The tanks may be a little bit far forward, though. Void Rays will take out the barracks. And Florencio right now, he's like, okay, please walk into my Widow Mines. Please, please, please. Oh my god, the Cyclones and the tanks are very exposed. Oh god, oh god. Those tanks go down. Widow Mines do start to fire, but only one of them gets off in time. And these Cyclones, they're very, very fragile. SCVs and Cyclones up front. He's trying to bait them. The Widow Mines move forward. He might be able to kill them. But if he doesn't kill them right now, the Protoss is ahead. 30 probes versus 30. But Florencio's just got back to mining. He doesn't have gases or anything like that. Battery is going to get taken out. The Widow Mines are here now as well. Is that cannon in range of them? It looks like, yeah, one of those, those front two Widow Mines are in vision of the cannon's detection. But the back three aren't. So that one is still going to be getting hit there. Cyclone's going to clean up that Stalker, though, if you don't watch out. Marcus tries to do a bit of the in and out, bit of the back and forth. Doesn't quite manage to pull it off. There are Immortals building in the back of the main. Stalker's warping in one at a time as well. If they stand up here and an Observer gets out, he can clean this up. But for now, Florencio's going to start taking gases. He's building more Cyclones one at a time. This game is uh, an absolute disaster for both players. It's, it's looking like a little bit of a hot mess. And... Florencio is going to lock onto the Nexus. The new Psycho. I like that he's discovered the new Psycho. It's not that different to the old Psycho. It's just a bit more accessible, a bit lower on the stats. But, ooh, can't let the Void Rays lock onto those Cyclones or they do go down. But you can kite them. The Nexus falls. Ooh, he gets one of the Void Rays. Not bad. To be fair, if the Void Ray Immortal A moves, I think it wins the game. Maybe not. He could pull the SCVs, but, man, four Cyclones, like... That's the only damage, and they're so vulnerable. They get they get almost two shot by the Immortals. The Void Rays with Prismatic Alignment kill them very quickly. Look at how much damage those Immortals do. I think Marcus might be able to win this, but Florencio is like, okay. The only oh my god, the Void there's more Void Rays that came from the proxy. If they flanked those Cyclones, this would be game over. But Marcus is so under the gun, pinned aggressively, is trying to build cannons and batteries here, and Florencio is bullying him with the inferior force. Florencio right now is an incredibly fast, incredibly agile... Uh, yet skinny bloke. We're talking about a dude, you can see all of his ribs. You, you, ever, you guys ever had a friend where you can see their heartbeat when you're at the swimming pool together or at the beach and you're like, I can see your heartbeat through your chest. We're talking that level of skinniness. Now, Marcus on the other hand is squat, has a low center of gravity, has some muscle on him, good bit of fat as well, is a beast. All Marcus needs to do is get their hands on Florencio's crappy little fragile cyclone army and they win this game. The problem is they are a bit slower, the reaction speed sucks, and right now their confidence is hurting because those Widow Mines, I think, triggered them a little bit. A lot of Protoss players, they see Widow Mines and their brain kind of breaks apart a little bit. They are fucking, there might be more Widow Mines, I can't chase him, I can't chase him, there could be more Widow Mines out there. We know there's no Widow Mines, but this is giving time for Flo to now build a row of turrets, which is going to protect him from the Void Rays. The Cyclones continue in a micro back and forth, and the thing is, the new Cyclone only has 9 lock-on range, and five or six, I think it's five acquisition range to, to start the lock on and then you can leash up to nine range. So the thing is, it's really advanced micro to lock on and not get hit. But I think Florencio's got him so scared, he's actually able to pull it off because Marcus is just panicking a little bit going, uh, uh, uh. he's trying to build a carrier, right? Did I just see a carrier start and then cancel? What? Oh my God, he just started the carrier, then canceled. He's making flux veins instead to add a bit of speed there. The F veins. That's the uh, that's the the, the zero virginity uh, upgrade for those void rays. It's where the void rays really f. You know, they're like, I totally have a girlfriend. She's real, and we definitely have sex upgrade. Uh, the void rays come forward. The immortals as well. The missile turret's gonna get a few hits off. Flo's taking an expansion up there. He's he's got a new factory. If he puts that on the reactor, he can start building widow mines, which I think are pretty decent in this scenario. He still, by the way, does not have the speed upgrade, even though he's got a tech lab factory. The speed upgrade's so useful for these cyclones. But remember, Florencio only makes upgrades when there is a very specific purpose for it. Now, I would argue, in this case, kiting Void Rays, pretty specific purpose. Ooh, that missile turret's gonna get taken out. Good micro by Marcus there. I don't know about the prismatic alignment. I mean, if he lands hits on the Cyclones, they'll obliterate them, but he would have done that anyway. I don't think he needs the prismatic alignment because it slows him down a lot. He does have f veins now. The Immortals are taking a lot of damage. Dude, Florencio is being a proper dickhead. I love it. Florencio right now is just kind of hitting him over the head, flicking him in the ear repeatedly, going, hey, dickhead, do you want to fight my missile turrets? Marcus is like, no, I don't want to fight static defense with Voidros. It's not a smart idea. Can you fuck off? Florencio's like, hey, dickhead. Hey, 
How about um, you, you come and fight into it? Finally, Marcus has realized, wait, I still have depots and things I can kill on the other side of the map. Builds a few void rays. A carrier now restarts, so the fleet beacon's up. Tempest would be great. Tempest could have been picking at this this whole time. I think Tempest might even be a win condition. But Mark is not thinking of that right now. He's going for more gateways and more immortals. Oh, look at that. One shots a Cyclone. The moment Florencia oversteps, this is what I'm talking about. The Cyclones are so fragile. If they overstep even a tiny bit, they get wrecked. And oh no, two Void Rays going down. Marcus, you need to either be running towards or running away from Cyclones. So you need to be either running away to break the lock on or running forward to kill the Cyclones and forcing them backwards. That's the micro. It's the classic in and out. But uh, of course, a lot of players on these new patches are going to be freaking out and figuring it out. Now, Florencio there. He's decided to build a tech lab blocking his reactor. So he has two tech lab factories. He's got a new conveyor center up top. He's going to take out the cannon on the low ground. So it's now one base versus one base. But Florencio has a new expansion up. And this base here is more fresh. Whereas the Protoss' main base is getting very low on resources. So he's sending a prism out. He should definitely pick up a probe and go drop elsewhere to expand right now. Since he's trapped in his main base. SCV is going to go up there to scout. There's cannons and batteries building on one base. Uh, Marcus, I still think at any moment he surprises this army. He kills all those Cyclones and just rolls through it. Man, he's got four Immortals. It takes Cyclones forever to kill an Immortal, especially with their barrier up. Marcus going to go over and try to clear up this. But, I mean, what is there to kill? It's just two depots. Maybe he's just scouting for Expos, which is fair enough. Not too bad. A Cyclone and a Tanker on the way. This truly is a very special kind of classic game of, of Florencio Starcraft, right? As Florencio just finding a new unit that he hasn't used before, the new Cyclone, and finding a way to absolutely dick his opponent with it. Just just slowly slapping them in the face with those uh, those clamshells of his. To be fair, what underwater sea creature do you think, to involve the comments a bit, to add to the lore of Florencio, since I'm not as up-to-date as some of you, what sort of sea creatures do you think he does use? Is it just oysters to cover the titties? Does he use, or clamshells, I guess, is, is what it what it was, right, with the original uh, the Little Mermaid? So, was it clamshells? I think it was clamshells, like purple clamshells or something like that. But uh, are we thinking he just has, like, a big sea cucumber in front of his sea cucumber? Or, or, or is he kind of morphed in together, so he is made up of different sea creatures at this point, and they actually are, like, his genitalia? Anyways, talking about sewer merman genitalia, it's a very special conversation that you'll find only on this channel. Um, five cyclones. <laughs> oh my god, they get the carrier? They just got the carrier! How the hell did he kite a carrier? They have piss all range. He hasn't made the speed upgrade for them. <laughs> and he just killed a cyclone. Guys, he's got these flux veins, void rays, immortals, and carriers should easily be beating this army, but Florencio has just figured out how to move and shoot with it nicely, and his opponent is not microing very well. He's lost all of his cyclones, though, so he's got his tanks and widow mines, but he's got the mining here, and that's the big advantage. Protoss is slowly re-expanding to their base. They've got a few zealots, which would actually be great versus the tanks, but I think with the widow mines guarding and the fact that they're attacking the wrong direction, Voidray flies in and dies to the widow mine. Oh no, the zealots are just derping in. This observer says, hey, I can fly. Ooh, it just gets killed by the missile turret. <laughs> Marcus, imagine if they grouped their whole army and went in together. If those immortals get on the tanks, it's game over. Even now, he could just march in and kill those tanks and win the game. But Marcus, clutching, clutching fear rather than being a confident protoss. Oh, wait, never mind, though. Actually, he's going to deny the mining up here, which is not too bad in of itself. Prism flies over that Cyclone. Cyclone, if it doesn't micro, will not get the kill, I don't think. Oh, gets it. I can't believe it. The refinery is going down from the high ground. Dark Shrine's on the way, which actually could be pretty cute. If he sends Dark Templar up the top, there's no turrets there right now. 26 workers versus 26. Dude, this is this is a match made in heaven. Two people going, I don't know what's happening right now. But Florencio, I think, has a big grin on his face. Marcus, on the other hand, I can imagine, is probably a little bit more stressed out right now and going, oh, what's happening in this game of StarCraft? I'm very confused right now. Ugh. I think that's usually what kills people against Florencio. It's their lack of respect, you know. You've really got to appreciate your opponent, even if they are a professional mud mud wrestler, you know. People go, that's not a real sport. Mud wrestling's stupid, you know. And, and it's that that gets them in trouble. Because when he throws some mud in their eyes and then just gets them in a headlock and starts making them gargle on that thick, viscous goo, you know that they're suddenly kind of out of their depth. And it's it's they probably still have the technical abilities to get out of trouble at that point. But they don't have the wherewithal. They don't have the ability to gather their thoughts. Because you've got him there. And I mean, they're, they're going, he just gave me a wet willy. 
and he did it with his sea cucumber, which he dipped in some sort of bloody mud first, and now I'm worried about an infection. You, you're worried about things five steps ahead and now five steps in the past. You're worried about what has already happened. You need to focus in the moment. It's the key of playing any sort of high-level competitive activity. Dark Templar, you don't want to run into that, mate. Get out with a run into that. Marcus does have a Robo Bay. I feel like, man, Disruptors would be god tier here. Like, just one or two Disruptors with a bit of micro could be amazing. Marcus has good money as well. Charge Lot's not bad against Cyclones. Technically, Cyclones can micro against them. But uh, it is what it is. A new Barracks building in the back. An Armory's on the way to turn these Widow Mines invisible. There is an Observer up. Marcus is just going to casually take a third. <laughs> Florencio is coming forward. He's been mining a lot more for a while right now. He's 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 mining. I say that he's actually mining less. Well, if he drops mules, he's mining a lot more. He's going to use a factory to block for his army. His tanks are in a nasty position, and he's going to try and bait the Protoss into a bad fight. Now, as Marcus has still not sent those Dark Templar as a harassment unit, Marcus with the professional F2 select all army control. Marcus, get out of there! What are we doing? Attacking a factory? I can't believe that factory worked so well. Florencio, honestly, I swear. This man's opponents turn into, like, a Chewbacca. It's like he just puts a piece of raw meat hanging there in an obvious trap in the forest, and they're like, Ooh. Uh. Uh. Smells good, me hungry, and they immediately just fucking pick it up. It's like, you're so dumb. <laughs> Why are you using a laser crossbow in the future? To be fair, all of the guns in StarCraft make just about no sense. I feel like someone could show up to that universe with any sort of modern automatic rifle, and they would have a nightmare. They'd be like, my god, they we don't need lasers. We can just have we can just have friggin' pieces of meta metal shot shot through controlled explosions and it and it goes fast and, and oh it's actually way more lethal than these stupid laser gun shots. Cyclone's gonna pull back right now. The Dark Templar goes after it. Nice scan. Florencio is running around in circles right now. We got five cyclones on the left, two immortals, a colossus, and a few zealots on the right. And Florencio here. He's just, he's just having, he's set up his layer of traps. He's trying to build another barracks. He's trying to build layers upon layer of meat trap. He's got the siege tanks in the back that are the Ewoks with the spears that are going to take advantage of it. Uh, we've got more cyclones building as well. Still no speed upgrade. He refuses to make the speed upgrade. And Marcus is like a sentry. That's going to help me right now. <laughs> Why are there Dark Templar, a stalker, and a sentry in this army? You, you know the Protoss' brain is broken when they just start being like, I don't know what to do, so I'll make one of everything then I should make at least one of the right unit, right? Like, like this is, this is the way, where Marcus has outsourced critical thinking to basically, it's when you have a multiple choice test and you just pick a random answer. Except instead, because you get one out of four if you do that, Marcus has, has decided to fill in every circle and said A, B, C, and D. That means I need to be at least one correct, right? Uh, Florencio right now is, of course, the examiner and professor at Florencio's uh, science school for kids who can't macro good. He's basically going to say, actually, technically, if you if you fill in every circle, that invalidates the answer and you get zero. Whereas you'd at least have a one in four chance if you just guessed and picked one unit and built a lot of them. Marcus is like, ah, oh, shit. Oh, my God. These cyclones on the left. Okay. At this point, the nipple clamps are fully attached, but not on the nipples, on the gonads. Uh, and Marcus's beanbag is getting um, absolutely, uh, absolutely punished right now. We're talking, talking about the fleshy beanbag. You know what I'm talking about, internet. Um, it's it's getting tortured. Florencio is basically like, hey, I'm hitting you. Come over here. And then the Cyclone's on the left. Hey, I'm hitting you over here. Hey, I'm hitting you over here. He just keeps running in from both sides. And Marcus is just there going, Aah. and it's decided to make Blink. Chrono boosting Blink. That's going to help you get out of this, guys. Blink Stalkers. You know a Protoss' brain is broken when they start making Blink Stalkers. Oh, no. <laughs> if I just micro like Hero, I can get out of this. Can you micro like her? No, not at all. I'm terrible at microing stalkers. Why are we making them? I don't know what to do right now. <laughs> Florencio truly is the creature in the dark. The monster hiding under the bed. And uh, the man that makes people do things that make just about no sense. He's been torturing this poor victim for so long. And now their brain is broken. They're making stalkers two at a time. Oh, my God. Stalkers are not going to cut the mustard, mate. Now, you might be wondering, how do you cut mustard? Guys, it's normally in a paste. It's really freaking easy. If you can't figure out how to cut mustard, you're stupider than I thought. And you guys are watching me cast Florencio, so you must already have a pretty high IQ. To be fair, the only thing higher than a Rick and Morty fan IQ is a Florencio fan IQ. Anyways, five Cycloids over here in the back of the natural. They're finally going to get caught in. 
Florencio's FU squad finally gets cut down, but not before he gets a Colossus. How many times can Florencio kill capital ships and major units with Cyclones that don't have the speed upgrade that have Immortals? Just constantly one space out of range of killing them. The Stalker chases into the Widow Mine, not using Blink to dodge Widow Mines or anything, by the way, which would be the whole point of making Blink Stalkers. Hey! No, we're going to just Blink into the Cyclones. Oh, oh, that ain't it. That ain't it. Oh, no! The Widow Mines! Oh my god, they're finally killing some of the Widow Mines, but at what cost? Oh my god, and they're blinking forward again. Florencio is just torturing this poor fool, falling back layer after layer. There is a new base up for Marcus, and to be fair, Florencio hasn't expanded in a long time. If anyone could lose from here, it would be Florencio. But let's, let's, let's give our hats off, by the way. These four Marines are still guarding these two depots on the other side of the map. Florencio is now building a Liberator, which is going to be... Uh, I think he's, he's, he's like, hey, he made stalkers. They did nothing. He's going to stop making stalkers. So now I make liberators. And then he's going he's gonna to be confused and not know what to do. Okay, good good, good thinking there. Looks like the natural will come up soon for Florence, uh, for, for Marcus. But doesn't really have the minerals. Okay, it looks like he's actually going to expand down the bottom side. Florencio is scanning, figuring out his next maneuver. I, I really feel like the cyclone he's realized is just the perfect unit. So cheap and accessible now for baiting his opponent into making stupid decisions. This is going to be Florencio's Terran patch, I swear. He's just going to make Cyclones and be like, Hey, I'm hitting you. Come over here. And people are just going to run into Widow Mines and tanks and bunkers and planetaries over and over again. Marcus building Stalkers and Zealots. Because when you're 23 minutes in and nothing's working, start making Zealots and Stalkers. The worst units in the Protoss arsenal. Command Center building at the top left for Flo as well. And at this point, I think he's simply savoring the salty wounds of his opponent. Florencio... Um, you know, it's it's kind of funny actually. I played a game. Um, I went to, to PAX uh, Melbourne the other week, and I was uh, was having some fun playing a lot of indie games. One game um, was a, a very you know it wasn't it was just in like just a little sh uh, a demo of the game, and it was meant to be a very I think it was called Sinister. And and the game starts and you're a dog, and you hear a guy in an alleyway, um, kind of moaning, and you go in there and there's a guy with his leg chopped off, and you're able. The only thing you can do is go up to him and you can you can like press a button to, to eat and you you and then you basically just start feeding off the, the the corpse leg while the guy like moans and cries and you're like okay this is really messed up um florencio is pretty much he's like the one guy who played that game and is like yeah i can just play starcraft same experience he's like the one guy out there where like he's like that's all i get from games is literally like eating from the open wounds of my opponent sucking out their soul and their will to live like we're gonna find out at some point florencio is actually some sort of weird demented succubus we're gonna find out that this man's only pleasure like, like he was either actually killing people and there's a basement somewhere with lots of bodies or on the other end maybe starcraft has saved hundreds of lives because the way he plays starcraft it flows anything like this in his day-to-day -day, every life let's be real the man has a real urge to not just kill but savagely torture. We're talking Ted Bundy on crack. We're talking uh, pretty much every single serial killer dialed up a notch, you know? And I feel like Starcraft's been an outlet for him. I feel like for Florencio, Starcraft has saved the lives of so many victims. The Stalkers are not going to move out of the Lib Zone. They're just going to stand in it. The one immortal that's been struggling to chase these Psychos down for the last five minutes. Oh my god, some Stalkers finally blinked forward. The one immortal, it kills a Cyclone. If he stands on the high ground, he could kill some more. But he's gonna run away again. Oh, Marcus. Oh, just just tap, mate. Mate, stop building stalkers, please. He blinks out of range. But actually, somehow they maintain range. I thought it was only nine lock on. What the hell? Wait, wait. Is this the old cyclone? Am I actually stupid, guys? Is this the old cyclone? And I haven't realized this whole time. It is, isn't it? Oh, this is the old cyclone. I'm so stupid. This is not the new patch. I thought it was. I could have sworn this was the new patch. Well, never mind, guys. I actually have brain damage. Uh, this is the old Cyclone. I can't wait to see if he uses the new Cyclone. Um, there, there must be so many comments by this point of people who haven't made it this far in the video who've already commented going, Pig, are you stupid? That's clearly the new Cyclone, the, the, the old Cyclone range. So there's a reason why he didn't make the speed upgrade, guys. It's because they, they, they... I was like, they do look a little fast for the new Cyclone, but I guess I'm just brain damaged right now. I was like, you know, sometimes things just look wrong. I'm actually really stupid. Um, hats off to Florencio, though. This is the old Cyclone. Do you think he'll be able to do this with the new Cyclone? Let me know. He must have set this replay to me just before the patch came out on the ladder. And to be fair, it was a torturous game where he did slowly twist his opponent's nipples. Will he be able to use the Cyclone in the same way in the new patch? Probably not, I would, I would guess. 
But yeah, 120 hit points, so they don't they get three shot like the old Cyclone, and they did have a lot bigger lock on range and more damage. But he didn't make mag field all game. So he could have been doing double damage to all the armored units all game, and he chose not to. Because Ferencio is Ferencio, and he's an absolute legend. I may be a bit of an idiot, but that was a classic Ferencio, Ferencio torture sesh. I still can't get over the first game. That was actually genius. I hope you guys and girls enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to check out the Wall of Bacon over here. Patreon's down below in the description if you want to hop on there. And big thanks to Jacob G and Maxan. Catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching, everyone. Goodbye and good night. Bye-bye.